SpaceX's Mars rocket Starship 10 is on deck in Boca Chica, undergoing tests before its liftoff. Elon Musk sat down with Joe Rogan for a third time. Starlink internet service is now available for order. We've got some other miscellaneous current events to share, as well as some upcoming missions to look forward to. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Over the weekend, Starship SN10 received its three Raptor engines as it sat on its launch mount in South Texas, waiting for its turn to soar up to 10 clicks and back. Then on Monday, its tanks were filled with LN2, pressurized, and vented to complete its cryoproof stress test. Road closures were scheduled later this week for a static fire of those engines, but have since been pulled. And FAA notams were posted and dated for SN10's launch as well, but were soon updated, specifying to the public that nothing has been officially authorized. Not that it really matters, the notums themselves have also been removed now. Which was to be expected, but still a good sign nonetheless that SpaceX is hell-bent on moving forward with the Starship program at ludicrous speed. On Thursday, Elon Musk went on the Joe Rogan experience again and spoke about a wide variety of topics, including Starship, and confirmed his hellish intent to move progress forward. So We're, when... we're getting to orbit this year. Our goal is to get to orbit this year. Mm. He also explained why the rocket is more pointy than originally designed. You literally told them to make the starship more pointy because of the movie The Dictator. Yep. Um, <laughs> they, and they know it, too. It's not like they, it's not like they haven't, they're unaware of it. <laughs> Everyone thought it would be funny if we made the rocket more pointy, so we did. It is too round on the top. It needs to be pointy. Brownsville local Dayton Coslow shared some media files he captured while visiting the launch site. SN9's remains are still being cleaned up, and the landing pad is being repaired and reinforced. Meanwhile, the orbital launch mount has been receiving major attention this week. Crews were spotted installing utilities and other equipment that looks important. This is the place where the super heavy booster will launch from. And speaking of which, RGV shared a nice aerial view of the first booster's thrust dome that can hold four Raptor engines. However, Elon tweeted several months back that the first flight will only use two. So I don't know, maybe he has since changed his mind. Another big event that happened this week was the stacking of SN11's nose cone. This rounds out the first group of similarly designed starships. Just prior to SN8's successful test flight, Elon tweeted that major upgrades are slated for SN15. And just shortly thereafter, the few parts of SN12, 13, and 14 that existed were disappeared. Elon says his top priorities at the moment are first, build an orbital launch tower that can stack. A fully stacked starship super heavy rocket is not short, and it will be the same structure that enables astronauts to board the vehicle that will also act as a giant crane. I assume it's probably in the design process at the moment. Second, build enough Raptors for an orbital super heavy booster. Keep in mind each booster alone will require 28 sea level Raptor engines, and we can expect that Raptor, like the Falcon 9's Merlin engine, will undergo design changes and upgrades for several years to come, which will require the manufacturing line to be altered as well. And third, a common priority with all rocket designs, improve the ship and booster's mass. And what he means by that is cutting weight something they've already begun doing by testing three millimeter thick stainless steel rings, one millimeter thinner than the rings they're currently using. Hey, does this suit make me look fat? No, 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 your face does. We do have a couple Starlink updates to go over. The booster that launched the last flock of Starlink satellites to space has returned to the port. Greg Scott was on the scene to snap some pics. This booster set the turnaround record for any rocket just under a month between launches. And word on the street is it's already getting prepped for its next burn. The fairings of the mission also splashed down in the ocean after parachuting from space. They were fished out of the water and returned to sender, saving the company. One million dollars. Actually, it's closer to six million dollars. We have another mission coming up tomorrow, that's Saturday the 13th at 11.42 p.m. local time. And another one next week on Tuesday the 16th. Of course, both are subject to change. Emails were sent out by SpaceX en masse this week to those who registered at Starlink.com to receive service availability updates, prompting customers to either order the equipment or pre-order if your region is not yet serviceable. So I clicked on mine, and Eureka, I got a golden ticket. The snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> Some other non-Starlink missions were announced for the not so near future. Jared McLaughlin stated in a recent SmallSat symposium that SpaceX has two additional dedicated rideshare launches slated for later this year, Transporter 2 and 3. Although the recent Transporter 1 rocket released a world record 143 satellites, and Jared said demand is still strong and growing, he gave no estimate on the number of SmallSats on the upcoming flights. And NASA has officially awarded SpaceX with the responsibility of taking its first two segments of its Gateway space station to the moon's orbit. 
A Falcon Heavy rocket with an elongated fairing will lift off with Gateway's power and propulsion element, as well as its habitation and logistics outposts no earlier than May of 2024. This station will be used as an outpost, allowing for the shuttling of astronauts to and from the moon's surface for NASA's Artemis program. The total cost of this first launch is approximately $100 billion. Now, actually, it's closer to $331.8 million. Okay, here's just a quick briefing of more miscellaneous news from the week. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital raised $7 million from you generous space geeks last week from the Inspiration4 mission. In their commercial that I showed you last Friday, played a couple days later during the Super Bowl, bringing the total up to $8 million by halftime. The count currently stands at just under $9 million. The goal is $100 million by the end of the month. So get the word out there, nerds. The winner of this raffle gets to go to space in a dragon capsule. You may not win, but at least you can tell people that you are an astronaut candidate. That nut job was telling everybody on the plane he's an astronaut. SpaceX has a court date of March 18th to determine if the company must surrender their records pertaining to an interview they conducted with a U.S. permanent resident back in March of last year. The interviewee at the center of this legal drama, we'll call him Karen, is a dual citizen of Canada and Austria who filed a criminal complaint through the Department of Justice's Immigrant and Employee Rights Section, which I'm sure is filled with former Starbucks HR reps. You know, the woke types that color their hair blue and struggle with pronouns, alleging discrimination when the rocket manufacturer asked him about his citizenship status and ultimately didn't hire him for an entry-level position. SpaceX counter-argued, quote, he gave an unimpressive screening interview and SpaceX rejected his application at that point. In fact, as of July 1st, 2020, SpaceX had rejected every candidate it gave a technical screening interview to and had hired no one for the position. And I'm still quoting here, Apparently, he could not conceive of being rejected for legitimate reasons, and so ascribed SpaceX's decision to discriminatory animus based on his citizenship. Despite the fact that SpaceX selected him for an interview from among hundreds of applicants, knowing he was not a U.S. citizen, end quote. Haters gonna hate. And ainers gonna ain't. And lastly, Elon Musk declared he is writing an autobiography about his days building Tesla and SpaceX and the lessons he learned in the process. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for tuning in. Shout out to those of you supporting the channel through Patreon or through the YouTube membership program. Happy normal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.